So good evening and welcome to OTF Connects. Uh, my name is Susan Watt and I will be moderating the session tonight and I'm very excited to be moderating this session. We have a few different moderators but when I was submitting the dates that I would like to moderate I put a great big star beside this one because Peter and Brenda are two of my favorite people and I always learn something when I hear them present and speak and uh, come away energized and excited. So Peter and Brenda, we're thrilled that you're here and I know someone mentioned in the chat earlier on that they've been looking forward to this session since last year because centuries ago they used turtle art or turtle lo logo in their classroom and I'm one of those people that I don't think it was quite centuries but it was, cer was certainly a while ago and I loved it then and I'm very excited to be here tonight. So welcome to Peter and Brenda. I'm going to turn things over to you now and you can get started. Thank you so much, Susan. So after that great introduction, we have had a technology struggle tonight that is nuts. And if you, any of you know Peter, you know how many times he checks things and rechecks things and that is the way he rolls. And I know that because I've done so many of these with him. But tonight, something is really going wrong with his computer. So he want, in a minute, we're going to check his mic. And we have tried to do some troubleshooting to make this work in a few different ways. Um, but first of all, if you have not been successful in getting Turtle Art, I'm not sure we can actually do that and do the webinar at the same time. So. Um, Bear with us in that. There'll be hopefully some demonstrations and that kind of thing. If we have to, um, if we can't continue, then I'm going to suggest, Susan, that we will um, either reschedule or record this so that people have it and uh, we can be in touch in another way and have another kind of session where we do this again. But uh, let's hope that that doesn't happen. So the first thing we're going to do is have Peter test his mic. Go ahead, Peter. Okay, so I know he hears me because he tested it right after I asked him to and I could see it flashing. He has done, I believe, the audio check and yet nothing's happening. So I'm seeing him chatting and let's see what he's going to say. Can you hear me now? We gotcha. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can. That's awesome. Yes? You're kidding. Nope, we can hear you. No, tell Good. me you're kidding. Nope. Well, you know what? We can hear you. This is the weirdest day I've had with technology in a long time. This is good. So everybody can hear me just fine? Good. Because I have to actually speak into the mic but hear it through my speakers because it's not working properly the way it should. However, we're going to move on. Okay? We, we're, I'm happy now. My Mac's not working, my headphones aren't working, but I'm still happy. Do you know why? Because I started this logo in 1980. So that's a long time ago. So to watch coding come around again, this is great. Now, uh, let's just clarify what Brenda said there because it's really important. Um, if you didn't get it downloaded today and you're not ready to rock and roll with your hands on the tools, we get that. So uh, we're not going to try and solve that now. These things are hard enough. These kinds of workshops, they're hard enough to do in a face-to-face -face scenario when I can actually, when we can actually look at your computer and try to solve it together. To do it like this, it's pretty much impossible. So we'd be happy to follow up with you afterwards because really this workshop uh, tonight is going to focus. Uh, and the first part is on you know demo and then try, demo and then try. But that's very little bit. And for, the, for those of you who don't have the stuff, um, we'll just keep demoing while the people are trying for the five minutes that they're getting because they're not getting, not getting a huge amount of hands-on during the time. It's just not a feasible way to do it. It's really important to sort of grasp the basics, which is what the demo and try is about, and then spend more time digging more deeply because it's really the depth of this. I mean, 
Seymour Papert, whom you'll see in a second, talked about no threshold and no ceiling. And what we've often seen with logo and turtle art stuff is that people get started with the really easy stuff, but they stop when it gets hard. And, you know, Brendan and I often hear, oh, we've done turtle art. We've moved on to scratch. Oh, we've done scratch. We've moved on to whatever. So we would encourage you to dig deeply with the one tool. Uh, it's really amazing to do that. Susan, thank you. Syria, thank you. If you're here, I don't know. So around well, that time. Brenda, thank you for getting that going. Okay, so we can go to the next slide if you'd like. Let, uh, well, there we go. So there it is. There's where you can get Brenda and me um, and figure things out. Um, the disclaimer is you may be here for scratch because it's the more popular and well-known of these things. We're going to spend most of the evening on turtle art um, because it is a simpler interface and kids and teachers don't get distracted by all the bells and whistles. Scratch, we'll do a little intro of at the end. Uh, but what you learn in turtle art is definitely transferable, near transfer, to scratch. And then you can use scratch as well uh, at, your, at your leisure. You may end up coming back to turtle art. Here we want to focus on helping kids draw. Like drawing kids into mathematics is a very, just very clear title. We want kids to be drawing and focusing on the artwork and the mathematics part and the programming that goes with that, not getting distracted by what we call feature writer. Uh, next slide, please. So we'll, um, we'll talk a little bit first about Seymour Papert. Then we'll do an intro to turtle art. Then we'll talk about the total turtle trip theorem. Then we'll talk about procedures and sub-procedures, a little demo of Scratch, and then just showing you some physical turtles, uh, which you'll see in a little video that we have lined up for you as well. Next slide, please. That's Seymour. Seymour and Cynthia Solomon and Wally Fordzig uh, back in 1965 developed Logo. Uh, and they developed it on the ground with a physical turtle. Uh, images of which you'll see later on as well. Seymour studied with Jean Piaget um, and then later became a colleague of Jean Piaget's and um, has been, an, he's really known as sort of the grandfather of educational technology. He believes in a very constructionist environment based out of obviously uh, Jean Piaget's work as well. There's links to Seymour's work later on and we're not here to focus too much on the theory which breaks my heart but that's the way it is. Next slide, please. However, we will focus on a few women who are significant in this area. Cynthia Solomon did co-create Logo with Seymour. She's still around. Uh, Sylvia Martinez has been around since the early days, partner to Gary Steger, some of you may know. She and Gary have written a book called Invent to Learn. Uh, they're sort of the original makers from way back and are you know, happy these days because people are into making and coding. Sherry Turkle um, was a student of, a uh, student and then wife of Seymour Papert, uh, does a, has done a lot of work with uh, attention issues and uh, written a book called Alone Together and has been in this field for a long time too. Edith Harrell did a fantastic doctoral study uh, with uh, kids under Seymour Papert uh, where kids wrote logo programs that would teach fractions to younger kids. Susan Einhorn um, was the principal of a company called Logo Computer Systems Incorporated, which was Seymour's company, uh, developed the best logos in the world. And Brenda Sherry, some of you may know her, she has been involved in technology, educational, educational technology, constructionism, uh, worked with Michael Rose Jr. with little kids, and has an extremely constructivist, constructionist, optimistic approach to life. So that's my celebration for International Women's Day today. Next slide, please. Oh, I don't think I need the next slide. I think it's demo time. So maybe you could just, well, we can leave that one there, I guess. I'll just now show you the application sharing. Start sharing. 
yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Turtle art. Share. How's that looking on your screen? Tell it, me it's it is it is on there. Congratulations. <laughs> That's awesome. It is. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, so here, here's the deal. Remember just to watch at this point. I'm going to go over the interface. If you if you decide to skip out and jump to your own turtle art on your own computer, you'll get lost and I won't cry for you. So that's just the truth. Um, because you get your chance to play in a minute. I really just want to show you the interface. Um, so here, you know, down the left hand side we've got these different tabs. And every time you click one of those tabs it gives you another set of blocks or tools that are inside this area here. And so, uh, you know, down here we go forward, back, right, left, arc, uh, with an angle and a radius, uh, set XY for XY position, set heading for your um, directionality. In the pen one, we've got pen up, pen down, if you don't want your turtle drawing. Pen size, thickness of line, set the color of it, uh, and a couple of other things there. Uh, numbers, uh, so you've got, um, I get the operations, plus, minus, uh, multiply, divide. Uh, here you have random, minimum, maximum random, um, greater than, less than, equals to. Here are some control things for the flow. You can have the turtle, you know, wait for a certain length of time before it continues on. You can have it repeat something a certain number of times, and other things I haven't clue about. Over here, uh, this is where your blocks will go. So these are the programs that you will write and they will sit here and with variables as well. So very quickly what I'll do is just show you the very basic interface. When I drag a block out here, it defaults to forward 100. If I double click it, the turtle will draw a line 100 steps, 100 turtle steps. If I click the eraser over here, it will clean the screen and put the turtle back to its home position. Um, if I um, edit the distance, so I could go here and make it 67 steps instead, it'll go double click it, it'll go forward a shorter distance, only 67 little turtle steps. Click the eraser and it clears. Uh, I can drag out the right block from here and snap it on. If you, if you put it, it'll snap, it'll, you'll hear it click actually. I'm just going to change this back up to 100 for fun. And if I double click it, it will go forward and turn right 90 degrees. Now, when I'm doing this with kids, or we're doing this with kids, you don't normally tell them it's going to turn right 90 degrees. We ask them, what do you think it's going to do? Kids will often say, oh, the turtle's going to go over to the right 90 steps. Well, it doesn't. It's a rotation. So that's kind of cool to ask questions. We'll be telling you a lot, or we might normally be asking a lot. So, how many times would I have to do that for to finish the square? Well, you guys answer in the, in the chat there while I sort of do it. Click the stamp tool up here. And then I'll drag this. And it takes it. And if I click the stamp tool again and just drag the top one, it'll do four. And now it's got four, which some undoubtedly you said four. Uh, and now it's going to be forward 100, right 90, forward 100, right 90. Double click, and that's what it does. So that's kind of cool. So um, I could use the weight block. Down here. Hopefully. This goes down a bit. Now, when I do it, just a little louder, there. Peter, please, a little louder. Yeah, if I drop my microphone, if I need two hands, I'm in trouble because I have to hold my mic in front of my face because my other mic didn't work along with the other things that didn't work. But thank you. So now, here we go. Double click it. Goes forward 90, waits for 10, 10 turtle units or whatever that is, and does the square. So that's kind of nice. Can I stop you for a question? Okay. Sure. So, um, Nadine's
asking, when they were attaching like that, were you double-clicking to make that happen? I'm actually not double-clicking. I'm actually, they actually, when you drag it out, let me just take this off. When you drag it out, if you don't get near it, it doesn't click. If you go on top of it, it doesn't click. If you come up close to it, it snaps into place, and you should be able to hear it click on your own computer. And, Cin and Cindy has a question. She may have just seen you do it, though, on how you break them apart. You break them apart by, uh, you know, trial and error. So, you know, I try to rip this one off the top. That's not going to happen. So you basically grab the one on the bottom and pull it apart. The one underneath will pull it apart. If you try to pull the top one off, it just goes as a, as a unit. Yeah, it's cool. Another question is, yep. is it more for junior and intermediate students, would you say? Uh, it's more for children. That's a bad yeah. answer, but it's a yeah. great answer. That, it's for anybody. Yeah. It's for preschool up through um, university math students. Mm -hmm. And you'll understand um, that one. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and finish, sorry. And then you'll understand towards the end of the session why it will work right up. That's why Seymour said no threshold, no ceiling. Right. Yeah. Elizabeth had a question about um, are there books that would help to learn this? And I mentioned in the chat that Brian and Artemis create a, a package of cards um, that, that they use showing. with educators. But we'll be showing some of that a little bit I'll later, right? The website. I'll be showing the website a little later. Uh, that has those materials on it. You can also use other Google and the, the YouTube to find out what other people are doing with turtle art. Um, I don't know of any published books because this is not a published program. They they chose have chosen not to go commercial with it because they don't. They're uh, oh, they're still old hippies, you know. So that's just the way it is. Um, so Scratch has lots of books and that kind of thing. Scratch, as Brenda could tell you, has all sorts of Google resources now around it and everything else. Everybody's making money off it. But the cards, honestly, are, in my opinion, are really sufficient because what you do not want to do, in my opinion, and I think Brenda would agree, is give recipes to kids on how to do this. What you want to do is give them a little bit and have them try. Give them a little bit, have them try. You know, and I'll get into the physical aspects of movement too to understand it from a uh, you know physical understanding of the mathematics and geometry. Uh, when Mita, when we say cards, there are, you'll, I'll show you later. There are cards online that we'll show you. Okay. So let me ask: Do you want to take five minutes and just play with this on your own computers, or should we just move on? Okay, some yeses. So uh, let's let's do it for the five minutes um, because we've got a lot to get through. So don't be frustrated. Just come back here with your questions. Go away and try it. But uh, keep asking questions. Um, yes, that'd be great, Susan, if you set the timer. And if there are those of you who don't have it up and running on your computer, if you just want to ask questions, or you can just watch me play here if you want. And I'll just mess some numbers up, and you can you can do with it. So Kathy's suggesting move on. Uh, so what I'll do is move on, but I'll stay within the same realm of the skills that I just showed, rather than showing you skills while the timer's on. Good deal. Good. Yeah, no tablets. No. That's why we like real computers. So. Let me just fling that off there. You just grab it and fling it. I like that too. I'll uh, grab the turtle. I'm not going to. I'll, I'll use some of these other things, but it's sort of the same. So forward 100. Um, what kids love to do. Here's what kids love to do. Peter, you just, had, you just had a question which you could answer right now is how do you change the numbers? And you're actually answering it right now. Awesome. Yeah, you, you just click in the way there, and kids do this forward 1,000. In fact, they do one million. So it just goes off the screen with this turtle, with this version of logo. So it doesn't really do anything fantastically fantastic. Um, so they would come back. So you could ask a kid, how many turtle steps do you think it is to the top of the screen? I think it's 179.
Oh, no, maybe it's more. So maybe it's another, maybe I could do another forward mm, 33. No, maybe another 33. Hmm. Maybe forward 10. So try, you know, this, this is bad problem solving, but this is what kids possibly do initially. Okay, that's pretty good. I could add those up now. Oh, I didn't make them all. Oh, I should have should have done that. Should have made them all. Cause I knew I did that one twice. Okay, so Put back there. Four one seventy nine. Okay, oh, hey kid, you could approximate. Oh, I could. Okay, so, uh, forward. Four hundred seventy nine. That's like uh, one eighty. This is like thirty thirty. Okay, 30 and 30, 60, 180, Peter, can you stop for a second? Yep. Um, still some confusion on how you're changing those numbers. Can you describe what you're doing? Because we can't see you using your keyboard, of course. I click in there. It turns blue. And I type my new number on the keyboard. All right. Can you see it turn blue okay? Yes, we saw Not that. Nita was just wanting a clarification. And how are you getting that turtle to move? That was another question. I'm double clicking on the on the command. So yeah, I'm gonna clear this again. So there it is. I could also come up and use the wand and click it. But I just don't see the need for the wand because I can just uh, use the arrow. I can just double click it. You can use back as well, and left, and these numbers just default to their, you know, distances default to 100, left or turns default to 90. So I could make something interesting, I could make, let me do this up back to 100. So if I go forward 100, left 90, back 100, what will happen? Oh, cool, it's called backwards. Okay. Then I can have a turn right, 90, forward. Well, this is what I, if I, I've taken the number out of there, I have to go get a number. So I can go get a number from there. Okay, make it 100. Stick with 100 for now. Let me clear it. Oh, I'm going to make a set of stairs. Okay. Make a set of stairs starting down here somewhere. Put the turtle down there. I can make a set of stairs. I bet you if I take my stamp tool and copy all of that twice, I get a set of stairs. Maybe. Put over here. Get rid of that one. Here. I'm going to turn it down here. Double click. Oh, okay. And then you run across all the issues and problems. So five minutes up, Susan. Oh, look at that. Okay. So, nobody questions all through, and that's fine. So, Brenda will keep bringing those to me because I can't. I'm not really watching the. Uh, watching well, the chat. Okay, before you yep. start this one, one of the questions has been around how would you use this in instruction. I'm sure that people are seeing the obvious connection to geometry, but I think um, I think as we and all the number work that students are doing as they think larger, smaller and all that kind of thing, I think as we get more into your more difficult um, demos, they're going to see more and more mathematics emerging. So just Keep okay. thinking about that, folks, and we'll make those connections as we go. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we made a square, but we made it with forward 100, right 90, forward 100, right 90, you know, four sets of, of blocks like that. We could, in fact, use the repeat command. So I'll go to the flow, pull out repeat, defaults to 10 times. That's fine. I'll change that if I need to. Bring out my forward. Click it in here. Click. Bring out my right. 
piece. And I'm going to bring out my, my weight one, too, just because I think it's easier for people to see it if it takes a break after, before it does its next thing. So, I'm going to tell you the answer. I wouldn't uh, do this with students, but I'm telling you the answer just in the interest of time. What I want to do, because I know it has to go forward 90 right, uh, forward 100 right 90 four times to make the square. Right? We agreed and that we saw that before. So I changed the repeat to four. When I double click this, that's exactly what happens. So, here's some math for you. And this is the total turtle trip theorem. Four times the angle, 90, is 360. My turtle has started with a heading and position, has made a complete thing and ended up with the same heading. That has done a total turtle trip. Okay, so 4 times 90 is critical to get that 360 for the total turtle trip theorem. Um, similarly, If I want to make a triangle, an equilateral triangle, how many sides is it going to have? Okay, I'm just going to clarify. It's going to Can have I clarify three. for Sarah? That it, what Peter's saying is a total turtle trip. Sorry, I didn't really need to interrupt for that, Peter. I could have trip. put it in the. Uh, yeah. Yes. Total turtle and trip. And another question from Nita is Did your right 90 refer to angles? And we would say yes. Yes, correct. So I see an answer of three in there because it's repeat three times. So I'll put three times in there because an equilateral triangle is going to have three sides. So then the trick is how, uh, what, I'll just put a weight down here again, what angle does it have to turn? So someone is suggesting In order six. to make an equilateral triangle. We have a triangle. suggestion of 60, twice, so three lots times. Lots of 60s, lots of 60s. Let's do 60. Here we go. Double click. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, Dave has suggested that it needs to be 120 for the total turtle trip to work. So it's because 3 times 60 is 180, so the turtle is sort of facing the direction from whence it started, the opposite direction. Total turtle trip suggests that you have to have 3 times some number that gives you 360. And Dave has suggested 120. Now I'm going to explain why that matters compared to the way we're used. It's not that you people who said 60 are wrong, because we studied Cartesian geometry, where we studied the inside angles, you see, and so 60 would be right. But when you're doing turtle geometry, you have to consider that you're in the turtle's footsteps, and that you have to um, turn an angle that leaves the 60. So you have to turn from your heading some number of degrees that gives you the heading uh, that leaves the angles of 60 on the inside. So, believe it or not, this is not a huge challenge for young children because there are ways to help them through this understanding. Um, and I'm going to show you a little movie in a second, but I think maybe what I'll do first is just give you an opportunity to play with the total turtle trip theorem and give you a couple of challenges. So you can make a pentagon or an octagon or any other polygon you like. So what you do is you drag out your repeat, you drag out a forward, you drag out a right, and you, you clip them together, and then you change the numbers to make it do what that which you want. So again, if you, Susan, would set the timer for five minutes, we could, uh, we could carry on with those who want to experiment with that, making a 
pentagon or an octagon or a hexagon or a, as one of my French immersion kids did, a bonesagon. And those of you who, are, who aren't off playing, uh, I'll entertain your questions happily. So I have a question about where we might start in primary. Would it be good to just have the kids play with the turtle or just try try some things like we're doing? So Brenda and I have invented this cool term. We call it tinkery. So it's a mixture of tinkering and inquiry. So we really value the whole tinkering thing. And um, we've actually been putting a K in there recently, T-I-N-K, just so people understand that there's tinkering involved as well. Um, so yeah, we uh, the way I like to do it is to show them, similar to what we're doing now, but, but slow down and not telling them so much. So you know, show them the forward, back, right, left, and uh, let, give them a chance to play with it and muck with it. Show them a next step. Let them play with it, muck with it. Give them some open challenges. Give them some closed challenges, and let them let them tinker, because they'll they'll generate their own inquiry challenges for themselves. Peter, do you want to also do you want to so, also uh, talk about yeah. um, going to the gym and being the physical turtle? Because that That's really was helpful. That's coming okay. up, Brenda. Yeah, okay. Uh, so Laura, I oh sorry, it's answered. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Any other questions before we move on a little, little bit? I know we're um, pushing. I mentioned in the chat too. If you have smart boards sitting around in your school, and I don't know about you, but in mine they were there and they weren't being used very well. This is awesome with the smart board because my grade ones and twos could cluster around the board and actually be physically pulling out the blocks and. It really helped, um, you know, a, a nice pace for kids who needed it a little slower. So, you know, it was it was great, uh, a really super use for a smart board, I think. Mm -hmm. So I, I have lots of stories about Total Turtle Trip and things my grade two said years ago, and things about Total um, Onzagon, the little girl that designed the Onzagon, something special she did. We have resources listed for you that Susan will be putting on the OTF site. I would invite you there to look at those because those rich stories speak volumes for what kids are capable of compared to what we, you know, can expect from them. Uh, I was always amazed at uh, at how brilliant they were and how much I was keeping the lid on their learning and slowing them down as a result of my desire to cover curriculum, so. Okay. Um, right, so let's just, you know, very quickly show the idea here. With If it's going to be an octagon, you do eight, uh, and the angle has to be 360 divided by eight. Okay, well, I'm a lazy bum, so I'm going to throw this away. I'm going to come over here, get the numbers, and find my division thing. And find my number thing. Put these together. Find another number thing. Okay, so 360 divided by 8. Is that sneaky or what? Then I'm going to get my octagon. Nice, eh? I didn't come up with that. My grade 2 did. Grade two figured that out. Now I was ah okay, pretty cool. Um, and that was back when you couldn't have code like this. You had to type the code in those days, so it was it was wonderful. Um, let us show you a video now. Susan, okay. So what do I need to do? I need to move this window. I go to window and I go to tools. 
I used to know how to do this. Stop sharing. Okay. Peter, Kathy is thinking this is a bit like HyperCard. Kathy, Kathy and I go back a long way. Kathy, yes, it is a bit like HyperCard. Oh, start sharing our switch modes. Switch modes. Okay, uh, Susan. Yes, Peter. Have, yes, Peter. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm very good. <laughs> Do you have the video link handy? Uh, where was the video link? I sent it in the resources package to you today. And I'm sorry we didn't have a nice time oh. to smooth it out. It's a, okay. it's a YouTube video. I could type it in. Okay, I'm going to go look for it. I, I didn't have that just sitting by, so hang on. Okay, and because I'm not on my own computer, I don't have it handy either, so. Um, I think you taught me that here. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll tell you a little story about um, No, I can't show you a story yet. It's not the right story. It's not the right time. I'll tell you that story after. Any other questions at this point? Here's one of our challenges that I've noticed over the years. Uh, when we try these things, they're very hard at first for us. And so we, we hold that back from kids because it's hard for us. Um, I learned a long time ago to stop doing that. Oh, look at that. Okay. Now, Susan. What's your recommendation here, that you web tour it? No, probably. Or that people yeah, go off by themselves. It works out way better if people just go off, and then they can put a green check mark when they are back, and they've watched the video. OK. OK, so folks, here's the deal. I don't want you to watch the whole video. I want you to watch it to 6 minutes and 35 seconds. That make sense? 6 minutes and 35 seconds, and then show us the green check mark when you're done. And if we interrupt you at the end, yeah, you got the video for later. Okay? Good. Off you go. All right, there we go. So most folks have finished, I believe. Is, uh, we're giving you resources to many videos about Seymour Papert, uh, talking about uh, his work and so forth with lots of kids and so, forth, so on. What year do you think that video might have been? Just type that in the chat. Yeah, quite a collection of times. I'm actually not sure about this one. Uh, my suspicion is, is it's in the 70s. Uh, one of the videos that we have in the collection is from 1972. Um, and uh, it's just funny, really, for us to look back and see that this stuff has 2026. Uh, oh, you know what? 
we'll probably be seeing it again in 2026 unless we get on with it this time. Um, anyway, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so you'll love those movies, uh, and they'll set your uh, heart on fire for this kind of stuff, I think. Okay, so what we're going to do now is um, have another look at another scenario, another couple of tricks, features. So they get my Evernote up with my notes here. Be good. Um, okay, so now we're going to look at making uh, procedures and sub procedures. So, for example, if we had um, this one that was um, a triangle, I'm actually going to speed it up here. I'm going to change the weight 10 to weight 3. So it'll weight a little bit, but it'll. That's faster. I'll change the size of the line, the side of it, to 130 just to kick it up a notch. Okay. So, what I can do is call this a triangle. So I can choose my blocks over on the left hand side, drag this out, click it onto the top. It's blue. I'll call it triangle. And now it knows the word triangle. There's my block has been made for me. So I've written a, a procedure. So kids get to name their own actions and build build uh, a block that has that name. That's pretty cool. So now what I want to do is have this triangle do this. I want to make a triangle and I want to turn right a little bit and make another triangle. Turn it right a little bit and make another triangle and so on and so forth. I'll call it a flower. So I'm going to pull out another naming uh, block, and I'll say flower. And then I have to start thinking. I want to repeat something. So I'll choose repeat some number of times, I'm not sure how many yet. A triangle. And then turn right some number of times. So I'm my total turtle trip theorem has to come into effect because I want it to go all the way around. So if I have it turn right uh, 10 degrees, I'll have to do the repeat of, and I'm expecting you to answer in your heads. I, again, if I had more time, I would you know, use wait time because wait time is a good thing. But 10 times this number has to equal 360, so that's going to be 36. So, let me see if I've got this right. Flower. Repeat 36 times. Do the following. Do a triangle. Goes up here and it does this. Comes back, turns right 10. Do the triangle. Goes up here and does this. Okay, so let's try it. So that's starting to look pretty good. It's times like this, then you want to take that weight statement out. <laughs> so it actually draws it. Getting there. There it is. Okay, it's pretty good. Let me take the weight statement out. We don't need it. I could also do it differently. I could say... Now, let me clear this. There's some variations. So I could do 18 times 20. That's still going to get my 36. It'll just look a little different because it's be less dense, I guess, because it's turning right more each time. Oh, did it fast. Okay, so got the idea. I could do 12 times... Uh-oh. 30? Am I close? Yeah. So you, you get the idea for that, I, I trust. 
once you name an action, it is automatically saved for future use. That's correct. Yeah. And so this is called a super procedure because it contains a sub procedure called triangle. Triangle is a sub procedure because it has no other procedures inside it. And they're called stacks as well. Um, 821. We had a we had a okay. comment about estimation, the kinds of things that kids would be doing with this, Peter, as they're trying things out, testing, trial and error, and uh, we're just talking about the idea of the problem solving involved with the bugs that kids encounter being pretty important. Was that an invite for me to talk about bugs? That was. <laughs> have we worked together you know before? <laughs> Maybe we have. <laughs> okay, so on my website, you'll see a picture of uh, what, uh, how I managed the bug thing in class. I actually created a little protocol. I mean, visual thinking is a big issue these days. It's a nice visual thinking book and all that. But back in the day, I created some protocols, and one of them was called After Bugs. So, because I wanted kids to actively see, seek bugs because everybody knew about bugs in programming. And so because this was turtle related, the kids used to think, okay, if I get a bug, I'm going to throw it on the floor and squish it. And I said, okay, that sounds good. Look for your bugs. And, uh, you know, one of the other kids said, well, maybe we should build a paper mache turtle, and then when we find a bug, we can feed the bug to the turtle. So my wife came into the school, and we built a paper mache turtle the kids could sit on, a big one with wheels on and everything. And uh, kids were actively seeking bugs in their work because it was a natural part of the process. So it really valued the whole idea of making mistakes, of tinkering, of trying, of losing, of winning, all of that. Um, but the most exciting part was the transfer piece. So kids were doing this with the turtle, but I found, overheard a couple of kids working on a different problem altogether on paper at their desks, just working on some other task. And one of them said to the other, there's got to be a bug in here somewhere. Let's find it. You know, it was just again one of those beautiful mental models that kids can get through this stuff. A, a nice model with which to think. You know, so you know, I bet some of those kids have carried that kind of thinking on through their lives, um, as I have, um, in in, help, in having them help me come up with these ideas around that. So, very very cool stuff. That can one. I respond to another question? Yes. Um, it was asked whether you could have something else other than the turtle. And I think some folks may not have heard Peter at the beginning, but when when you work with Scratch, which is another, uh, it's a free from MIT, a block coding program application similar to this. Um, when Peter was referencing how Scratch is awesome too, but Artemis and Brian have kind of kept this very pure to the turtle and the art so that um, kids would not get all distracted by costumes and backgrounds and that kind of thing. Not saying that that isn't great too, but that's been my experience too. Um, if you're interested in more of a focus around the math, I find turtle art keeps kids playing with math and, and working on number and all the things you've been talking about in the chat, estimation, problem solving, multiplication. When, when I work with kids with Scratch, for some reason, they, um, they, they work a little less with math and they tend to go into more um, some storytelling, some game-like uh, projects. And I think it's partly because the project examples are really very easy to find now on Scratch in the new version. So they tend to um, go into those games and start to copy the code and, um, and replicate that. Whereas here they do a little bit more of the logical thinking. So it's just, right. it's not that one is different, is better or you know, it's just there's a different, they're, they're, they're different tools, um, slightly different features, and then you as a teacher would want to sort of explore it based on what your purpose is with your kids. Is that a fair And, and Ryan, Ryan's Peter? made a good point there. Ryan's made a good point there, you know, saying that good management can avoid this issue. So it's, um, it's similar. I, I like a tool that uh, invites me to do certain things. Um, and 
you know, if I want a different tool for something else, I'll, I'll choose it, you know. So this sort of constrains me and, and not, it doesn't really determine my behavior, but, you know, helps me do certain behaviors. And Brenda, you've heard this analogy before. When I walk up to a door and it's a flat panel on the door, I know that tells me to push. If I walk up to a door and it's got a rounded handle on it, the word that I see is pull. So similarly here, there's a certain number of uh, things about these tools that are telling me to do certain things. Uh, when I'm in Scratch, there is uh, more of a distracted kind of, uh, you know, it wants me to click more, wants me to try more things kind of stuff. So you would need to, as Ryan's suggesting, you know, intervene with some human construct around that. So, um, so I'm a little worried about our time here in terms of giving people to try more things because I really think it's important for folks to see some of the deeper aspects of math and art with this. Um, is that okay if I just keep moving on? Okay. That's two. I'll take two as a majority. <laughs> That's not really fair, but... Okay, there we go. Now, Let's just take arc. Pull out arc. Arc has got an angle number and a radius number. So if I double click it, it'll make an arc of 180 degrees and uh, an angle of 180 degrees and a radius of 100. Okay. If I clear this, Pull this over here. If I duplicate this, put them together, and double click it, oh, that's what happens. So it completes it like that, okay? If I clear it, put in a set heading of zero, so it's going to do the arc set the heading to zero, and do another arc. It makes a seagull of sorts. Well, if I move the turtle over, you can see the seagull. So basically it makes the arc, and turns the heading of the turtle back to zero, facing head straight up, and does another one. If I were to clear that, pull this over here, let's say I change the, the angle on the first one to uh, or the radius, let's say, to 50. Double click. Double click again. Just keep double clicking. So then, you know, you sort of get tinkering with it. And kids, honestly, in fairness, kids can get doing stuff and change numbers without getting, without understanding any cause and effect. So that's obviously, danger is the wrong word, but it's a caution. Um, so we, we can get into that. Uh, translational geometry, yes, you can, Kathy. I'm not going to tonight, but <laughs> you can. <laughs> um, you can pull out set x, y. Set x, y. So, because normally if we're using turtle geometry, it's related to where the turtle is, but set when once you start getting into the setting of the x and y coordinates, you could set this to start at 100 x and minus 100 y. And we'll move the turtle to that position. So 100 x and y down here. So you still can do the, um, you know, coordinate geometry mixed in with the turtle. Uh, turtle geometry too. Um, what you can also do is pull out a random and just throw it in here after the first arc. Uh, how do you do that? Random In there. 
So now it's going to go. I'm going to start it here. Well, let's just click and see what happens. So it's picking now. It's doing the arc of 100 ang 180 angle, a radius of 50, so a small one. And then it's setting the heading somewhere between 0 and 100. You just don't know. So it's going to go sort of whack a line. You could take this out here. You could change this around. I'm just tinkering. Be different each time. I'm just double clicking repeatedly, and each time it's taking a different random number between zero and a hundred. Began working at the idea of of randomizing numbers there. Um, let's just put 50 back in. Where's the color? Pen color. Set the color to some random number. Let's get rid of that one. Just going to random. Clear it off. Double click. Okay, that wasn't very smart of me because I need to have it go off in a different direction, otherwise it's just going to go over top of each other. Okay, so it will change the colors too and do that. Same as set pot, set pen size and uh, and random. But I think what I want to do now is just show you some samples that are more intelligent than the <laughs> examples I just showed you. Unfortunately, uh, because I'm on my PC, these run like dreadfully fast and don't necessarily go as slowly as I liked and the way I practiced it on my piece on my Macintosh, which isn't working tonight. But you'll get an idea. What I'll do is show these to you and then we'll deconstruct them. So uh, let's do spinner. Whoops, a daisy. Okay, so let's see what happens first, and then we'll come back and uh, deconstruct it. Forgive the speed it happens at. Happens very fast. I could put in wait commands to figure it out, but now we're getting into some nice artwork. But it's looking complex now, right? So let's just clear this and play one of the sub-procedures first, spinner. So that's what spinner does. It basically does stuff that we know already. It repeats 10 times square, which is a standard square, and turns right 36 and finishes your, 10, your 360 degrees. So those two sub-procedures are now thrown into this big super-procedure. Clean clears the screen and puts the turtle back to uh, its home position. Set XY puts it in the X coordinate of 140, so over here a little bit, minus 60, so down here before it starts anything. Then it stores a variable in box 1. So really, all you have to remember is starting out with a value of 0. Box 2 is starting out with a value of 0. And then repeat 100 times the following. Set the color to box 2, currently 0, divided by 3. Set the shade, which is similar to color, to 100 minus box 2, which is currently 0. Do spinner. So it's going to do one of those. It's going to do one of those with those color things set. Then it's going to 
store in box 1, what was in box 1, which is 0, plus 1.2. And it's going to store in box 2, what was in box 2, which is 0, plus 1. So now the contents of box 1 and box 2 are different. They've been increased. Okay? And it's going to do that 100 times. So it's going to do another spinner after changing the colors and changing the valuables, values. And that's how you end up with that. It takes a lot of trial and error and a lot of mathematics. No threshold, no ceiling. Scary, yeah? So one question that popped up in the chat is about how we're not used to seeing colors um, given numerical um, values. And um, okay, did you find, because I didn't find uh, it too confusing for kids, so um, they just sort of adjusted to that. I don't know. Did you, yeah, there's you a number chart somewhere. I don't know what they are. And typically, uh, in the computer world, uh, numbers are all colors. Uh, whether you use, um, our, you know, there, there's all sorts of values, um, Pantone colors and, and all that for printing, and you know, colors, you know, hexadecimal colors, and all that. So colors are usually numbers. Everything's a number basically inside a computer. So um, I've never heard kids complain about it. Um, I don't know what the numbers are, what the colors are, but, yeah. In fact, you could probably have a kid write a program so that one equals black, two equals green, so on, and then other kids could do the colors. That'd be a nice activity, actually, for grade fours or fives to write for grade, for kindergarten. So the, so so the kindergarten He's sharing kids. a couple of resources. He's off finding resources, and he's sharing them in the chat. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> cool. So, so this one now, let's just do what it does and see what happens. Okay, pretty beautiful. Pretty beautiful. So what does it do? It cleans. Moves the turtle back to the beginning. Sets the pen size to 2. That's the thickness. Repeats 10,000 times the following. Set the x to some random number between minus 400 and plus 400. Set the y coordinate between minus 300 and plus 300. So you, it's going to start somewhere different every time. Set the x coordinate, set the heading, sorry, to be the x coordinate plus the y coordinate. So, if this number turns out to be uh, 25, and this one turns out to be 35, then you add 25 and 35, and that's the heading, the, you know, the compass heading that it's going to be pointing in when it uh, draws. Set the color to the same as the x coordinate, or 25 in the case I described. Y, set the shade to 35 in the example I gave and then move forward 100. So really, this is just a series of lines that are 100 units long, done with different colors and, and positions that they're set, set on. It's brilliant to me. <laughs> Crazy, eh? Titanic rain. It has a sub-procedure called droplet. Uh, let's run it first. Again, unfortunately, it goes very fast. But you can see now it's made these beautiful droplets of different colors. I'll clear the screen because it's easier to see, I think, the scenario. So for your droplet, set the pen size to 70, set the shade to 30. And repeat 70 times. Forward one. So it's only moving forward a very little bit, a total of 70 times. But you move forward one, and then before you move again, set the pen size to, you know, 70 minus 1. And set the shade to shade, this is up here, 30 plus 1. So this changes by 1, minus 1 each time, this changes by plus 1. So you'll see a dropper get made, because here it's going to be, um, fat 
or skinny. Which way does it do it? Starts fat. Okay. So set pen size is 70, yes, so it would be a, a big fat pen down here. Right? Because if the turtle, let's just, let's just show that. Pen size 70 and forward 100. But sometimes this is just what you need to do. Let's pull this back. Make a big fat line. So that's what you see, in fact, at the beginning. Uh, we have a little question about presentation mode. Okay. What's that? So that can you show it without the block? Yes. Right there. Oh, well, uh, yep, after that's you good. do it. After you do it. Yeah. So it's this tool here. Yeah. So kids could kids could screen capture their images afterwards and use them in various ways when they're talking about math mm -hmm. or sharing. Good question. Yeah, great about question. That. Hey, pedals didn't open. Come on, pedals. Oh. Oh, there it is. So, That's why. so while yeah, you're um, getting this up, while you're getting this up, I would love to ask Ryan because it sounded like he did a lot of scratch, and I would love to ask him if his kids do this kind of artistic um, creation in scratch because I found um, going when you when we did this work at Edward Johnson and the kids were giving turtle art a try, then they were much more interested in the arts project section um, in the scratch projects field. They they my kids didn't really take much notice in of the artistic you know how there's that whole section around arts projects in scratch until they had a, a little look around at this. So I'd love to know what, what whether your kids do um, artistic, like full screen kinds of stuff like this. He's saying now they were making geometric objects the other day, yeah. Cool. Nice. So here's another example of petals. It looks so complex. And it is, but in some ways it's so simple. Once you have some of the basics a little more, you know, attuned and patterning attuned to you. Know. So with pedals, it was a sub procedure, but a big one, right? So it was a matter of, again, sort of randomly, you know, throwing the turtle to start in different parts of the screen, randomly giving a number to box one that you're going to use for the radius down here and, and here. And setting the shade either 5 or 80. So it's either 5 or 80. Hence the colors um, you know, are as they are. It's either the green or the pink. Crazy. Uh-oh, did I just click a button? And uh, So not sure what... Mm -hmm, sorry. I feel like I just uh, clicked a button and jumped us into the wrong space here. I'm not sure what you mean. What are you seeing, Susan? I'm still seeing Peter's turtle art, so I don't think you did. Perfect. So That's awesome. Sorry. So we're being asked, what does the store in box one block do? So that's acting as a variable. And uh, variables are one of the hardest things to understand for, for beginners. I understand them better now than I did when I had to type uh, code. Because uh, let me see if I can store in box one. So OK. So what it's doing is, is providing a variable. So right here in the store in box one, random number between 15 and 100. Let's say it picks 62. So it's determined 62. Then when you invoke box one, it's 62. 
and down here it's 62. And then you can change the variable because what's happening is, hey, a new definition for box 1, store in box 1, 62 plus 0.4, not 4, point 0.4, you can't see the point probably, but it is point 0.4, because I remember typing this one in, I put in 4, you should see what happened. But, so it became 62.4. And then when it comes up here again, this number is no longer 62. This little number is now 62.4. Peter, I'm going to interrupt. Here. Peter, can I interrupt? Yep. Um, we're not yes, seeing, sure. maybe Brenda did do something. I'm not sure what happened, but we're not seeing your mouse move around anymore. We've just got a static screen. I hit the whiteboard yeah. button, Susan, so... And then I tried hitting application sharing again. So I think you need to hit application sharing. Or okay. Peter does. I'll stop sharing. Yeah, I don't and think... And then I'll, I'll come back. Yeah, I think it'll be Peter that has to do it. Sorry, I did... I, did I was mis... I just clicked by mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it didn't look any different, so I didn't realize... I know. No. There we go. <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay. Do you want me to describe that again, or are we good? Well, we didn't see it, so I would say okay. probably do it again. Okay. So uh, boxes, the box ones are variable boxes. So, for example, store in box one, 15, some random number between 15 and 100. So let's say it was 62. So then you come down the program, and 62 belongs in box one. Come down the program, 62 belongs in box one for the radius of this arc. Then they change the definition. Store in box one. 62, because that's what it is, plus 0.4. So now when I come back up here to run the program again, because I'm only going up this far because I have to repeat this whole section in here 200 times, according to this. This is now 62.4. And then when I come to it again, it's 62.4. When I come to it again, oh, I've got to redefine it. 62.4 plus 0.4. It's now 62.8. Can I come up here? This is 62.8. 62.8. Oh, redefinition. 62.8 plus 0 0.4. 63.2. 63.2. 63.2. So that's the way you increment the variable. Hope that's helpful. If you, you know, it, it's tricky. It's programming. But it's really a great way for kids to come to understand abstract concepts. You know, back in the day, I used to get criticized by my colleagues uh, who were instructional leaders in the day saying, well, kids are Piagetian, and you know, and they can't possibly understand abstract numbers. They have to have concrete things. And my response was, you know what? When dear Jean Piaget designed those constructs, he didn't really have tools that were abscrete. I call them abscrete because here we have a scenario where kids can tinker and play with something that's concrete yet abstract. So abstract seemed to be a really sensible kind of term to me. And kids didn't have as much difficulty with it as perhaps we, as perhaps they would without these tools. So, and, and honestly, building with it is the way to figure it out. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I was just going to make a mention because some people were talking about um, inquiry and how they could see this really as a useful tool for um, some of the inquiry they're doing around mathematics or anything. But I think one of the things I would urge you to do is not worry about it when kids get stuck. And they may even have to leave it and come back and let them be stuck. Because I I have just seen so many exciting moments when kids take, you know, several days of going back to this to figure out their bugs. And um, certain students just have certain leadership around certain skills around this kind of, um, of, of programming. And that's awesome. And sort of that gets posted in the classroom, you know, when you want to help with... Um, you know, like when you were doing your flowers, when you want help with procedures, you're going to talk to certain people. And when you want, want help with colors, you're going to talk to others. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, to hear them shriek and be so excited when they actually get it is 
pretty amazing. And I think we have a tendency to want to make it into nice, clean, tidy lessons. And I, this will quickly get not to be desperate. <laughs> need and tidy, and that'll be the best part of it, you know? I visited a school in California where every kid had the same piece of paper with the same set of instructions on it for them to type into the local world, into the local program. It was not good. It was the antithesis of what you could want kids to be doing. You're better off to you know, demonstrate a few skills to a small group or a large group, give them a challenge, some very specific challenges, and some open challenges, and repeat that act again with another uh, you know, set of um, features and so forth. And then as Brenda says, you'll have your experts uh, arise and they will be happy to be the experts. And it may be your, uh, your kids on the spectrum who are the experts in, in some of these kinds of things. What a blessing that is. How often do they get that opportunity? You know? and, a, and a good so, good point in the yeah. chat too. Someone's asking about, is it you know is there anything available on the iPad? There won't be turtle art exactly available on the iPad, but you know I have on my phone move the turtle like Ryan's just suggested, or the Scratch Junior now. So you know if you can't get turtle art, you can get other kinds of block coding for free or on your Chromebooks or on your tablet. So you know what you've learned tonight from Peter will transfer into all of those other kinds of block coding applications and. It's still so worth it, even at, you know, this is one example. Uh, I'm just looking for my, I thought I'd started up Scratch on here, so I'm sure some of you are waiting for Scratch. I, I do have it. I'm just going to really give you a very quick piece of it, because as I said, a lot of it is transferable, so. Is that, is that okay on your screen? I gotta change screens actually here. Just loading the create piece. So this is the scratch interface with your and this is where, this is the canvas out here. First thing I like to do is use this shrink tool to shrink this cap down quite a bit. And then here are your uh, pa uh, panels, or tabs for your panels and the contents of the panels. There are many more here than in Turtle Art. Uh, so move 10 steps, turn 15 degrees, you snap them together in the same way. So if I say, if I double click it, it'll move 10 steps and turn right 15 degrees. Pen is not down automatically in this, so you can choose pen down. You can say move 100 steps and turn 90 degrees. We'll stick to the same so we won't change up the uh, concept too much here. Pen down, turn right 90. So you get the idea there. The control is the same kind of thing repeat and now it contains it. You pop it in there and it pops it in. Repeat four times. Pen down. Da, 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 da. Um, I don't care this. I know there's a way. That's okay. That's good there. So same kind of thing. So uh, I'm just curious or cautious on the time here. But um, I hope you forgive me for not jumping through the Scratch interface and using it tonight. Um, but you see that many of the things are the same. Uh, there's much more powerful things in here as well compared to Turtle Art. Um, but as we discussed earlier, it really, really depends on, on what you want. So you know you can have in here, for example, color touching. So if your character touches something that's red, do such and such, turn right or stop or back up or whatever, or play a song, that kind of thing. So there's lots to be explored with these tools. Um, I'm going to come back here now. Tools, application sharing, stop sharing. 
And when it cools, back to whiteboard. Oh, how do I do that? I can just click on whiteboard kind of yeah. Okay. These guys. Uh, Brenda, do you want to talk about this bit? Sure. So we had we got a grant at my school last year for a bunch of money, and we bought some laptops and all kinds of stuff, and we bought some B-Bots and Pro-Bots. And we gave the bees to mostly our kindergartens and grade ones, and we used the uh, Pro-Bots, the little cars, with um, older kids. And what you can do, you can see those buttons on top of that B. Basically, you get a forward, backward, right, and left command. And it will take little steps. And so students can be programming it. They're, they're just programming it by touch. And it's doing some of the moving around. So we had them like all over the school going around in the hallways, up ramps. They just loved it. The one on the right, the ProBot, um, you see a little circle, uh, there's, an, there's a little screen there. So you are actually using some of the coding commands like write, you know, write 90, forward 100. And you can program some procedures like what you were doing with Turtle Art and that car will move. You can also, there's a little hole in the top of it. You can also stick a marker in there, and it comes with markers. So you get the sense, kind of like in the videos we were watching with Seymour's kids, um, you can put a pen down, and the students can actually be drawing their program right onto paper, um, exploring it that way. So, And it also has a cord to connect to um, Terrapin logo that comes with... Uh, with the um, the probots when you purchase it, so you can you can program on the computer and then send it to your your probot your your car and vice versa. Old... So um, we didn't yeah. get to that with my students. We didn't get to that part yet. We were just physically using them. They were using Scratch and Turtle Art on computers, and then they were using these in the physical space. The bot does not take a pen. Right. Regrettably. So, you know, these have come out in recent recent years. Um, I would love the old Valiant Turtle back. Um, you know, not just because I'm an old guy, but just because, again, it's a bit of a purist thing. Um, and and to me, honestly, a car is just not an appropriate uh, gender-free dealio. So. Um, yeah. I'm trying to... There's a question uh, you about... You can dress it up. Yeah. I can't remember. They aren't that expensive. Um, I think I was thinking of six of them. I think they're about $67 each for the cars. And then like I think that. I got a pack of six for, you know, $300. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> I don't have that in my mind how much it works. So we're pretty well at time. And I know that's been like a real whirlwind and hasn't really jumped in deep. Uh, anywhere, sort of been surfacing, you know, surfing the deep stuff, but not really giving it an opportunity to play or even to have, you know, big conversations. I'm glad Brenda was here to, uh, you know, support the conversation piece. It's really important for me and for Brenda to have people who we're working with have voice, and uh, I unfortunately missed a lot of the voice just because I was focused in the way I was. And, but perhaps what we could do and would be happy to do would be to figure out a way to do this. Well, we do these face-to-face -face from time to time, but maybe there's a way to have a good conversation and just pick one item and go in deep somewhere else, you know. Yeah. So, Brenda, any... I, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Turtle, turtle geometry and, and this stuff has been... Uh, central to my educational life for many years. It's informed me very deeply. Uh, Seymour Papert's work uh, and his philosophies uh, have impacted me since since the very early 80s. And so it's, it's interesting and wonderful for me uh, on a personal level to see it come back and see now so many teachers involved and looking at it 
with eyes that are different than what uh, some of us had then. So this is great. Brenda? Yes, thank you, everybody, and thanks for participating and getting some really good thinking and talking going. We had a couple of questions, people with people, uh, Peter, with people struggling to get turtle art, so if they want to stick around, we can help them. And we also had a question around how to get the chat saved. Um, Susan will send out links to all the resources that we've shared in the chat, but if you wanted to grab that, you're going to click File, and then you're going to click Save, and you're going to choose Chat, and that will um, allow you to download that chat in the text file to your computer. So thanks very much, everybody. I'll turn it over to Susan. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'm just going to talk a little bit before I do all the thank yous, just about what happens at the end of this session. So as soon as you close out of the room, um, your browser is going to automatically open the feedback form for tonight's session. You can also access it right now. Uh, this slide, often the slides are not active links, but in, in this case, uh, that is an active link, so you can just click right on that and it will open up the feedback survey right now. Uh, that might be a good thing to do. I'm also going to put it in the chat. Uh, underneath, there's a, a link to future OTF Connect sessions. So the other thing that's going to happen after the session is finished, I'm going to stop the recording. I can actually probably stop the recording right now.